Everybody knows the James Harden deal just got completed two days, so James Harden is officially a Brooklyn Net. He's playing this Saturday, right? Believe so. They said they said he should be back by Saturday. I don't know about Kyrie. Supposedly he's following the protocol, but we have not yeah, heard he's funny. anything. But something a lot of people are concerned about is, is Kyrie even going to be a part of it? How much drama is he going to stir around the team? What do you think about this situation? Do you think Kyrie Irving's absence is a big deal? Do you think the media is being too harsh? Are they being fair? What's your opinion on it? I just I just want to say this one thing. I saw, um, I think it was your game against the Denver Nuggets. Yeah. 30 minutes before the game, Kyrie was on a phone call, a Zoom call, talking about social reform. I think his, his mindset is about something bigger than basketball, and you can't knock him for that. I just think he has to balance between his job and then, you know, helping the community. I think, like, he he thinks he's better than regular people. No, you get paid to do a job. It is your job. You have to come to work every day like we do. It's just your job is entertaining other people. You have to come to work every day. You get paid big bucks to do this job. And ditching this job to do something else that other players like LeBron have shown that they can multitask with doing their job and doing the stuff for the community, I think that's kind of like spitting at, not spitting like, but you know, like disrespecting your teammates in a sense because you paid, you get paid and you sign this contract to ride for your teammates every night and play for them. And then, you know, you do what you do outside of that. So I think his mindset is in the right, you know, it's in the right setting, but he's just handling it wrong. I, I will criticize him for two things because I, I've said from the beginning He's got to take care of whatever personal things that he's got to take care of. So if it's personal reasons, I hope, I wish him the best, take care of it and come back. And when he's been on the court, he's been getting buckets. I mean, he has been one of the, he, he's been one of the best players in the league when he's been playing this season. But the two things that I will criticize him on, one, communication, because until today's press conference, the only reports we had heard is that the Nets had no communication with Kyrie. The only communication there had been the entire span that he was out was he texted the players right before tip-off the first game that he missed. So that's a problem. Like, talk to Sean Marks. Talk to Steve Nash. Tell them what ha- what's, what's happening. Just let us know what's going on. Take care of what you have to take care of and come back. So the communication was very poor. Two, I, I really didn't like the optics of him at the birthday party with no mask on. I get it. It's his sister's birthday. It's his dad's birthday. You have all the right in the world to celebrate that. Just put a mask on. There's there's 40 people there. Just put a mask on. I don't think it's that hard of a thing to ask. When you're the vice president of the NBA Players Association, it's a really poor example to set for the guys that you're supposed to be leading, especially when you said you're leaving because of personal reasons. I know it was a family birthday party, but when you're caught on video in a big crowd at a club without a mask on, it's a very bad look. And so I would be critical of him for that, just like I was critical of James Harden when he did it. I don't think it's the same situation, but when you break it down in a big crowd, at a club, no mask on, it's the same optics. So I'm critical of him for those two things. I don't really, the Zoom call, like that's a legit thing that he should, that's a real life thing that I give him credit for tackling. I wish he would do it on a different time. But I'd rather go through this now in January, early January, than have this pop up in May or June. The thing is, now come back. You've had your time. You took care of your personal problems. We just traded for a guy that you wanted to trade for. So we got to do this. Like it's, it's basketball now. We got to figure this out because you can't show up in March now after missing two months and just try and figure out this chemistry. It's going to be an all season long thing getting these guys on the same page and figuring out rotations, especially with a rookie head coach. So the communication was poor. If he could have just communicated well, I really would have thought this was an non-issue. But off the court, it's become a black cloud over the team. And on the court, the Nets need a ball handler. So with with Dinwiddie going down, they really haven't had a point guard. I mean, they have Durant handling the ball most of the time, but their other guards are Bruce Brown, TLC. It hasn't really been there, so... He's got to come back. It's shown in the turnover column. They need a ball handler, and he's got to come back and do his job. This is not a big deal. I think everybody's making this a much bigger situation than it needs to be. For one, that mask incident, I don't I don't even care about that. 
for one, it's his sister's birthday party. Let me ask you guys. Well, right now, we are not wearing masks around each other right now. Riv, do you wear a mask around your family? Um, Like if I'm at a party, I'll just have it like right here. Okay, so you don't have it on. Do no, you wear no. a mask around your family? No, but it, it wasn't just his immediate family. There was like 40 plus people. But there. I'm guessing the people that were there are people that he trusts that were invited by his sister. I don't wear a mask around people that I trust. That's just me. People can call me irresponsible, whatever. But when you're in the NBA, like Kyrie Irving, even if you are maskless, they get tested every damn day. So even if he was maskless, if he had tested positive for COVID, then it's like, ah, look, he messed up. But if he didn't test positive, he's, you know, he's good, then I don't think it's that big of a deal. People are trying to make a much bigger situation out of it. People do this stuff all the time. And right now, I know a big media figure is telling Kyrie to retire. I don't want to say, yeah, I didn't want to say ridiculous. his name. It's so stupid to try to tell Kyrie Irving to retire. It's literally the most stupidest thing that I've ever heard. For one, Kyrie said he wanted to retire at like 30 years old or 31. He didn't want to play for too long. But to tell him to retire now because of the communication with Brooklyn and all that stuff, superstars get superstar treatment. If you are bringing value to a company, you can get away with a lot of stuff. That's just the reality of the situation. You know, Antonio Brown, it was different, right? Because people like to compare this to Antonio Brown and stuff. No. Antonio Brown had legal issues. Kyrie Irving has been nothing but making statements. Yeah, like He's been charitable, The, the only thing that he's done is say the earth is flat, which people criticize him for. And, I and think he backtracked I, yes, on that, too. And I, and I think it, it, the flat earth statement was a dumb statement. I'm not going to defend that. But the thing about it... Kyrie Irving has not gotten into trouble. He has not. There have no report. No reports have came out of him sexually assaulting women or physically assaulting women. Those things came out about AB. Other players, those things came out. The only thing about Kyrie is communication issues, mood swings. He's an odd guy. Regular stuff, but like regular stuff that a lot of people go through, but it's just magnified because he is a very famous figure. But when you talk about Riv, well, you mentioned this. You mentioned this, and I don't. I don't. I disagree with you when you said that Kyrie like thinks he's better than others. I don't, because Kyrie has donated a a a bunch of money to charitable charitable organizations. He is trying to fight for social injustice, and whether you believe with the stand, you believe his stance or not, I feel like he is actually somebody who is trying to be grounded with people. But instead, because you are so famous, it is impossible to be grounded with people. You can try all you want to be grounded with people, but you can't do that when you're a public figure and whenever you're around, people get starstruck. They want to start taking pictures of you or videos or snitching on you for going to a sister's birthday party. Who took the photo? You cannot do anything without eyeballs being on you. And I don't think enough people understand the, the mental toll that it takes on a person. All Kyrie's trying to do is to be himself and if you want to chastise him for being himself, then I I guess that's whoever. Who, if you want to do it, then that's you. But I'm not going to do it. Star players get star treatment. If you bring a lot of value to a company, this is what's going to happen. You can do stuff like this, and that's just the reality of this world, and people have to get over it. I didn't have a problem with him being in the phone call or being a part of the fight. It's just a time and a place. You you had you have a game in thirty minutes. Like this is this is your job. This is what you do. You get paid to perform. That could have honestly waited. Like it could have been a, on a time where he didn't have a game or a time or the next day. Like that that Zoom call could have waited. I'm not saying like a basketball game is more important than social. Like that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying you have a job and a priority to do something that is like that that's what you're supposed what to do. What if the call was scheduled for that time? Is Kyrie going to say you said superstars get superstar treatment. I'm sure he could have fixed that. But is that. is that not trying to be above everybody else? Oh, you guys got to switch the whole time of the Zoom call cuz I got a game. Yeah, and that was that, a, that true, was but, for but a congress member. It wasn't I, just like I understand like, uh, that, but is it above being everybody's where you could just miss your job? But he said that's a congress member. Like that's no, a serious no, I, call. I get that. I know I get that po a congress I get that po but I'm saying you saying you just said, isn't it above yourself if he gets it to change, right? But isn't it above himself to feel like, okay, since I'm a superstar, I can just miss games to 
jump in a Zoom call when this is this is a part of my job. I don't think he sees it like that, though. I- I'll say this about Kyrie. I think you hit the nail right on that. He's the most unreasonably hated NBA player that I can remember in my time watching basketball. People paint this guy out to be some villain, and I don't think it's that at all. I think he's looking at the things that he's doing right now. Like, the birthday party was a bad optic, but that isn't why he's taking the time off. I think he thinks there's bigger things in the world right now, and he's trying to, you know, use his platform to make the world a better place as much as he can. And, and I can't speak towards if that's really what's happening or not. I don't know him. I don't know what he's up to. None of us do. But I, he doesn't strike me as the type that he's just trying to pull, pull his strings because he's a superstar. I think he would be doing this if he was the 15th guy off the bench. Because he thinks there's more important things. He'd in probably the world. get cut if he did that. But exactly. But you know, we can't speak towards what he would do. What you know, we only know what he is doing. One other thing I want to say, because you brought up Stephen A. Smith, one thing he said that I thought was disgusting was he said that Kobe Bryant was his favorite player, and this is something that Kobe would never do. And I just think it's disgusting to hold that over his head, hold his deceased friend over his head. Like, I just thought that that was really messed up. You know what's the thing about it, too, is that these famous media figureheads talk about it like they were so close to Kobe, like best friends that they knew what he would have thought or what he wouldn't have thought. Stephen and Kobe were pretty close, though. But, like, close, like Not Kyrie, close Kyrie, Kyrie and Kobe. Kobe close? No. Well, Stephen A knew Kobe longer, so I, I don't know. I don't know. That, I can't sit there and assume who knew, like, who was closer to Kobe. I know Stephen A and Kobe go way back. This so. is what I'm going to say. This is what I'm going to say, and our listeners are probably going to get mad at this. But oh, boy. <laughs> when we come up with the topics for these shows, we come up with topics that we think our listeners are going to like the most, and it's going to get the most views and receive the most likes from our stuff, right? When ESPN and First Take are coming up with content, they do the same thing. But for them, it's it's a much it's on a much higher level because they have to answer to stakeholders and all these guys. ESPN is plummeting right now. So they have to do controversial stuff like this. You don't think Stephen A. Smith is there thinking that if I say this, this is going to go crazy? Yes. We all think that before we get on the segment, I know what I'm going to say here. I think this is going to be really cool. I think it's going to be really entertaining. So you think he said it just to... He might have meant it. I don't know Stephen A. Smith personally, but I felt like... If he did mean it, and if he did say that take, it was a really, it was a take that l- lacked any foundation. It was a ridiculous take to say, and for him to hold Kobe's death over Kyrie is ridiculous as well. It it just makes no sense, and I think that's why a lot of people are shying away from looking at mainstream media because these guys say ridiculous stuff for clicks, and we do this podcast twice a week. It's hard enough to do a podcast, prepare, and watch games on a consistent basis. These guys that are doing it every single day at 8 o'clock in the morning, there's no way they watch all the games that they're talking about. Like, it's just simple as that. So a lot of a lot of it is just them being entertaining. They're not even really analysts. I agree. Yeah, at a point. 